Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ari, and today we're going to have some more stories about our toxic life. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to my channel, like the video, if you enjoy it, and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now without further ado, let's go. Today's first story. In this story, Opie reminisces about his marriage of 12 years, initially filled with pride and admiration for his wife's nursing career. However, he discovers her decade-long affair and deceitful financial dependence on another man. Confronted, she confesses, leading to their separation. With support from friends, he exposes her to her other partner. She faces the consequences, ultimately resorting to a humble life, regretful but abandoned. Now let's get into the story. Twelve years ago, I married my wife. She had her nursing degree and always seemed like an extremely kind and respectable woman. I was proud to go around bragging that I was married to the best woman in town. Since my parents were legends in the area, I felt almost like a celebrity. Success was easy for me since my father trained me in his craftsmanship. My wife and I often went to gatherings and parties, all dressed up and classy. I thought she deserved it, but I was wrong. I didn't know that seven years after we were married, she met someone that would change our life forever. Shortly after we were married, she left the chaotic and unpredictable hospital employment to work a much more comfortable and sophisticated job. To elderly and wealthy people my father knew were looking for a trusted nurse to share their mansion with them for one week at a time, two weeks in a month. Although it was a small adjustment for us to live apart like this, I was extremely busy working on client projects so this schedule suited us just fine. This happened as I just told you for the next 10 years. But in actuality, she stopped working this job completely after 5 years. One night, I was sitting at the dining room table with my wife of 12 years eating dinner. Earlier in the day, she helped me mark down which expenses she put her paycheck towards that week. I was feeling extremely grateful, happy, and pleased. I'm sure she was too but maybe a part of that was because she was able to keep her affair for me for so many years. Suddenly, my phone rang. I excused myself to take the call, like I always did if it was business related. In the other room, I heard my father's worried voice. He asked me if I knew that my wife wasn't working for his elderly friends anymore. I said she still was, so he explained that he was having tea with them when they mentioned that she quit working for them four years ago. The room spun and I felt my body become weightless. I just asked my dad where my wife was getting money from. He didn't know the answer to that, and he was worried for me. In a daze, I turned to look into the dining room at my wife. She was chewing, but smiled a closed lip smile at me. When my face didn't turn from extremely disturbed, she swallowed hard and asked me what was going on. I asked her where she'd been getting her money from all these years. Her fork dropped, and she slowly rose to her feet. She looked down, then back at me, and said she knew this day would come. She told me she loved us both, so whatever needed to happen was fine. She made peace with it. I just asked who she loved, and she said me, and another man's name I didn't know. She met AP at one of the social gatherings we went to. He was a truck driver, who was only home for two weeks out of the month. After their relationship evolved over text, phone calls, and several dates I knew nothing about, he asked her to move in with him. Somehow he didn't know she was married to me. She quit her job and was there for him whenever he got home from driving. He didn't notice her using his money to pay our household bills because he made and spent money without much thought. I was speechless. She added that she would just make up stories about the old people whenever I asked. A scream came out of my body. I felt like I was shape-shifting into an animal. Every part of me hurt. And no matter what thought I had, it tormented me. I told her to get out, repeatedly. I was saying more than that, but I can't remember exactly what I said because my memory becomes a blur. She packed willingly and quickly, but she had the nerve to wish I wouldn't take it so hard. I was freaking out, completely devastated. I grabbed a paper bag and started breathing into it just so I wouldn't pass out. This was our entire life. I thought she was my diamond something to be proud of, something strong and beautiful that I'd never lose. 
All the while, my father was on the phone. Hearing my despair, he called some of my friends, and they all agreed to meet at my house. When they got there, I literally fell into their arms, letting each of them hold me for several seconds. I needed their strength. My soon-to-be ex loaded her car alone, silently, until she drove away. I couldn't believe she was going so easily. My father, friends, and I all started talking about what to do next. I decided with their support that we needed to figure out who AP was and tell him that she was living this double life. She certainly didn't deserve to have a backup home and spouse she could run to. We found him after some investigating. My wife's secret online account that led us to him was under her middle and maiden name. We messaged him, but he and I ended up speaking directly over the phone so I could answer all his questions. When he realized I knew everything about his girlfriend and had pictures of us living our lives together, he broke down. She broke two hearts. He swore he wouldn't allow her to have anything of his ever again. That same day, my wife called me sobbing. She asked me why I had to ruin her life. I couldn't believe her selfishness and inability to accept her wrongdoing. She got away with having two lovers for so long, I guess it was twice as heartbreaking to lose both at once. I told her she was the one that ruined our lives, and she was a liar that didn't deserve to be happy. That was the last time I ever spoke to her, even though she continuously tried contacting me. She updated me continuously. At first, she tried getting back her old job, but after the couple found out she lied and cheated they called her untrustworthy. She resorted to a nursing job at the hospital again and rented a small, pathetic apartment. She was forced to work full-time as a nurse just to make ends meet, which she said was nearly impossible after mooching off two men for so long. With the new demanding schedule, she hasn't had time to date anyone and has asked me more than once to take her for old time's sake. I always ignore her. She already stole too much of my time. Today's second story. In this story, Opie takes up a garbage collector job for financial stability and meets a reserved woman, forming a relationship. Despite her past secrecy, they move in together. When her old flame visits, suspicions arise. Confronted, she denies any wrongdoing. Later, he learns of their past infidelity. Confrontation leads to her leaving with her ex. A month later, she returns, regretful, but he rejects her. She disappears from his life, leaving him bitter about her inability to move on from past mistakes. Now let's get into the story. I started working as a garbage man because of the lucrative pay. I wanted to be able to provide for myself and a future mate. It helped that I didn't find it hard to wake up at 3 in the morning. I got my own two-bedroom apartment by the age of 21. I started going out on the town in an attempt to meet a woman. I found one that stood out to me. I saw her sitting all by herself in a bubble, tea up reading a colorful paperback. I introduced myself, and she let me sit down with her. She was soft-spoken and seemed generally sad. She would perk up about certain things in conversation, but overall she seemed to have a past that made her cautious and hesitant to make friends. We met several more times, and I found out she didn't even speak with her family anymore. Not her parents, brother, or any of her old friends. Without anyone, she just survived on her own, painting in her little studio apartment. She sold her art as part of her income, but she also worked part-time at an art cafe where she hosted and taught wine and paint nights. She was sweet but didn't want to say anything more about her past, like why nobody talked to her anymore. After dating for a year and a half, she moved in with me. I felt responsible for her and cared deeply. I wanted her to know she could come to me for anything. About three months of living together were really wonderful. Then her childhood friend got in touch with her again. I thought it was great and I supported her. She was really excited but nervous to talk to him again. I thought it was because she was afraid of getting close only to be hurt again. But that's not exactly what was going. It turned out he didn't speak to anyone from his past either. He was working a construction job four hours away from us and started video calling and texting my girlfriend all the time. I tried to remain supportive, but he was taking up a lot of her time and it seemed way more than necessary, even if they hadn't spoken for a while. 
When I started thinking this way, I felt like I sounded paranoid for accusing them of falling for each other. I decided my girlfriend just wouldn't do that, especially not when I was there for her and being exactly who she needed in life. Right after I decided to relax about it, she asked me if her friend could come stay in the spare room for four days, the duration of a local construction project. I didn't want to open the door to distrust in the relationship, so I said he could. I wanted her to see me as the man she could spend her life with, and if I didn't let her friends come over, she wouldn't feel like this was her home. I feel stupid now for being so considerate about how she felt and her future because she didn't consider me or our future at all. I said yes, but I also called off work so I wouldn't have to leave them alone. I slept lightly for the first two nights, but it seemed like my girlfriend stayed in bed all night. She woke up with me at the same time the first two mornings, but on the third, she was gone. When I woke up, I ran through the house in a panic, only to find her in the kitchen with AP making breakfast for us all. I sat alone, uncomfortably watching them from the table, AP gobbled down the eggs while standing up and left for the site. I breathed a sigh of relief having my girlfriend to myself again, but she only sat with me quietly to eat her eggs, then retreated to the shower. After her shower, she left to bring AP a lunch she packed for him. This pissed me off. I bit my tongue until she was out the door, but then I freaked out. She never packed me lunch, even though I mentioned how hungry I was whenever I got home. When she got back, I told her we needed to talk. I said I didn't appreciate how affectionate she was being with someone that was only meant to be a friend, that her actions seemed like that of a girlfriend, and they talked way too much. She absolutely freaked out. I couldn't have seen it coming. She was always so meek and mild-mannered. But it changed in an instant. As soon as I accused her of being romantic with AP. Now I knew it was because I guessed exactly what was happening and she didn't like that I could see through her acting. She accused me of being crazy and paranoid for thinking she'd be so disrespectful to me. She said I was wrong and needed to have more trust in her. After being together for nearly two years, I started to second guess how I was feeling and left the house. I didn't know what to think anymore, but I knew I didn't like how she talked to her friend. I decided to search for her mom on Facebook. I found her and sent her a message. I explained the situation and said long story short, I needed to know if something happened between these friends in the past. She called me and told me that she and my wife's father stopped talking to their daughter completely when she and her friend refused to stop sleeping with each other. It was years ago now, but they were very inconsiderate of anyone else and would cheat on other people instead of just being together. I was speechless and mortified. I drove back home in a hurry and found them locked in the spare room. I banged on the door and yelled for them both to get out. I said I got off the phone with her mom and knew all about their off and on hidden relationship. My girlfriend then said she doesn't need to explain herself to me, then started packing her stuff as they loaded his old truck. I called her a bunch of names for wasting my time and making me think she loved me. She was crying, but I don't know why. She was only getting what she wanted, right? One month later, I got home from work and found her sitting on my doorstep. She was crying really hard. Her face was red. I'm not an evil person, but I was. She wasn't happy. She said AP met a new single woman with a nice home and decided that sleeping with each other, no matter who they were with, was wrong. In order to get back to my house, she had to take an Uber. I told her to go get her old apartment back because I never wanted to see her and I would certainly never. I slammed the door in her face. I have no idea where she went or what she did with her life. Whenever I passed the bubble tea shop, I never saw her. She ruined the good things we had because she couldn't leave her repeating mistakes in the past.